In this photo editing tutorial, we'll be focusing on Lightroom's powerful masking tools so we can take a photo like this and with precision and control, turn it into this. In the first part of the video, I'll be doing a more global edit to get our photo looking pretty good. And from there, we'll be leveraging Lightroom's custom mask features to really fine tune our photo. And at the very end, I'll be using a creative plugin just to create a slight variation on what we've done in Lightroom. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's come into our basic corrections and see what we can do. I'm gonna apply a camera flat profile because although it flattens out our photo, I know from the histogram in the top right here, I have the full dynamic range to work with. And then it's over to me to control the exact level of contrast I want in this photo, rather than sticking with Adobe color, which isn't gonna be color accurate to my specific camera. And it's also a more contrasty image to start with. I prefer to be in complete control of my file. Before you start any edit, I strongly recommend that we have a goal, an intention in mind of how we want to process our photo. And for me in this one, I'm concerned that the mountains in the background are just getting a little bit washed out due to the atmospheric perspective of the sheer distance from the seat to this background. And also the sky with all the lovely detail of the clouds, it's just a little washed out and lackluster. So I want to address that. And a second thing that I really want to push and enhance from this photo that already exists is the beautiful Beautiful complementary colors we have going on here with the scheme of the blue in the mountains, the sky and the water, and then the yellowy orange of the foreground and the background. So they're things I'm gonna keep in mind as I start to work through my edit and I'm not just mindlessly grabbing sliders and moving them and hoping for the best. In this example, we can see that all of the brightness data does sit nicely within our histogram. And so we know that this file contains all the information we need to edit this photo however we please. If I take the exposure to the left, you can see that we've got all of that detail in the sky. And if I bring it to the right, you can see that we also have detail in the back of this seat here as well. So I'll just double click the exposure to reset it. And I'm pretty happy with how the exposure is straight out of camera. So I'm gonna leave that. I will reintroduce just a little bit of contrast just to give things a help helping hand. I'm going to bring the highlights down and that's just going to help bring a little more detail into the clouds. If I grab the shadow slider and just have a play with that. We may just want to bring that up just a little bit. As we move the whites up, we can start to increase our contrast level in the photo, but we don't want to push things too far so that things are getting bleached out. And a good way to be mindful of what's getting bleached out is just to turn these warning dialogues on just in the top right and top left of the histogram, just by clicking those. And now we get that red warning where we're just starting to lose detail in those whites. We can do the same with the blacks as well. And as I move that to the left, now we're getting this blue warning wherever I'm pushing beyond pure black. And so I can move that up just to where we start to see a little bit of blue in the file. The mountains and the landmass in the background are certainly calling out for some clarity. However, when I push the clarity up, we're also introducing a lot of unwanted busyness in the foreground here. And so I don't really wanna push the clarity too high at this point. This is gonna be where our masking comes in. So we will address bringing out richness and detail in that background very shortly. And the same goes for dehaze as well. This is one of those photos that really is calling out for the use of the dehaze slider. However, I don't want to apply it globally. I don't wanna put that all over my photo. I just want to use in specific areas, but it's still a good idea just to move these sliders up and analyze your photo and get a feel for what each of these sliders is doing so that when you do come in and create custom masks for specific areas, you know what the sliders are going to do to those masks. So I'm just gonna bring that dehaze slider back down. And after looking at it for a while and you bring it back down, you just realize just how washed out this background is. So I may just introduce just a small amount of that. Let's go plus 10, just as a little Kickstarter. Because things are quite washed out, I feel like we can certainly benefit from adding in some vibrancy. Again, pushing it too far is too far. So let's not go that far. Let's just add in a little bit and perhaps a little saturation as well. I haven't spoken about white balance and that is because I'm pretty happy with how things are. This balance of blue and orange, as I said earlier, looks pretty good to my eye. So I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Let's open up the tone curve and just put a slight bit of contrast in this just by adding a basic S curve into this. The specifics of addressing individual colors, such as the blues and the orange, I do think that's a good idea, as is color grading, but I prefer to do all of my color work towards the end of the process. So from that point of view, let's move straight into detail. And if I zoom in so we can see how sharp things are, we can see that I definitely focused on this seat in the foreground and things get a lot softer towards the background. I'm not too worried about increasing the sharpness and the radius to try and bring back the detail in the background because things are just going to get over sharpened in the foreground here. So I'm just going to go with a relative amount of sharpening through the whole photo. 
just so that our seat stays nice and sharp and I'm not too concerned with the background at the moment. As we mask in some clarity into the mountains later, we're gonna get a sense of faux sharpness, like a false sharpening going on, just because we'll be exaggerating the highlights compared to the shadows. So we will get to that and it will certainly look a bit sharper in the background. Let's jump into lens correction, but please note, normally when I bring my photos in straight from camera, I have my profile correction set to automatic as soon as my photos are imported. So things like remove chromatic aberration, that is already ticked and turned on when I import, as is enable profile corrections but for the tutorials demonstration purposes just showing you guys it's really important that you make sure that these are turned on okay let's jump into the transform section and this is something that I'll normally look at only for my architectural work rarely do I need to do any of this for my landscapes however on this one I am going to use a guided transform because what I want to do is make sure that the horizon is level but I also want to make sure that this kind of line that we've got going along here this gravel line is also straight as well when compared to the horizon line and they're not perfectly perpendicular so I'm not going to be able to get both my horizon line and this line perfectly straight and so the only way to do that is to come into the guided section, click and drag a horizontal line for the horizon, and then come in and grab another line and drag that along this gravel path. And when I release, that's put both of those perfectly perpendicular. Now, as I toggle this off and on, you'll see that the geometry has also shifted. We've got a slight compression going on in our vertical axis, i.e. the mountains have got a little bit more stubby. So this is our before, this is our after, and as you can see, we're losing information at the top and the bottom of our frame. So to correct that, all we need to do is grab the aspect slider, and as I start to move that to the right, that's going to not only correct the geometry, but if we want, we can take it even further and make those mountains look even more grandiose if we want to. But I'm going to try and keep things pretty authentic and so around that plus 70 mark that looks pretty good to me and now I've got a choice to either crop in around this new edge or I can grab this scale slider and just increase the scale slightly until the photo fills the frame so now let's have a look at our before and our after before and after it's really subtle not much in it but wonky horizons even if it's only just one or two degrees it can really bug me particularly if you're printing something like this out to put on your wall it will annoy you so if you can correct something like that why not do it I said I wasn't going to look at specific colors yet but guess what I lied and the reason I'm going to look at it now is because this tool here calibration I think is underutilized inside of Lightroom and so I'm just going to show you that it has its place it's a valid tool if I grab the blue primary saturation slider and start bumping that up we can actually get a really nice saturation pop in the blue and oftentimes it's a little bit of a better way of doing it than coming into the individual blue slider and cranking that up sometimes that can be a little bit too aggressive a little over the top whereas doing it in the calibration section you can get some nice soft and subtle results okay let's say that's done for our initial edit this was before our edit this is after so we're certainly heading in the right direction with a global edit but now i want to come in and start working with those local masks I'm also just going to come back into the whites and the black points and just bring them in just ever so slightly. I think the contrast is getting away on us just a little bit. Okay, time for our masking. And through this example, we should be able to get a really good feel for most of these tools. And we'll look at how we can combine and subtract different masks for a really high level of control. But let's kick things off using one of Lightroom's newest masking additions, and that is Select Sky. So all we need to do is just click it. Lightroom's going to do some calculations, detecting sky, and just like that, we have a mask for the sky. It's not perfect. We've got a bit of bleed going on over the mountains here, but it's certainly good enough for a Kickstarter. Prior to having this AI-driven tool available to us, I would have been using a linear gradient from the top and then feathering it off down towards the horizon line. So this is already much more accurate. And now we can come in and start making some adjustments to the sky. So if I grab the exposure and shift that around, you can see that we have full control over that sky. One of the things I'm noticing is it's getting a bit of a greeny tinge. And so I'm going to grab the temperature slider and just make sure that the sky itself is definitely a blue. And we can counteract any green tinge just by adding a little bit of magenta into that. I might want to add a little bit of contrast in here. Perhaps drop the highlights down just to control the clouds at the top there. Bring the bright point back up a little. And with the clarity slider, we have the option to either introduce more detail into the clouds or we could go the opposite way and just soften them off slightly. 
and I think I'm going to soften them in this instance. Now, one of the things I'm being mindful of is at the bottom of the sky here, where it actually meets the line of the mountains, the value of the blue here is getting very similar to the mountains themselves. And so there's not much contrast there. And so what I might like to do is have this effect that I've created mostly in the top half of the sky, but not so much around this mountain line here. And so a way to handle that is just to click on the mask and then we have the option to either add to the mask or subtract from it. And so I'm going to subtract from the mask. I'm going to create a linear gradient that I'm going to take away from this mask. So wherever I click and drag, it's going to remove the mask that we just created. And now we have this gradient that we can move and position as we like. So I might just bring this down slightly. And so if I hover over this mask here, we're able to use the best of both worlds. We can have a precise mask for the sky that edged around the mountains. And then we're also able to feather that effect off by using a linear gradient to take away the effect at 100% here and then feather off up into that mask. But what if we want to add detail into the mountains? Where if we create a new mask is our select mountains option? There isn't one. However, what we can do is actually select the sky again and then invert it because that's going to give us the opposite of the sky, which is everything but the sky. That's going to be the mountains and everything below. And then we can just remove the lake here and just be left with an edit on the mountains. So let's try doing that. Let's go create new mask. We're going to select the sky. I'm going to stay organized by double clicking this so I can rename it call it mountain edit and I come to the drop down option by clicking it again and this time I'm going to come to the right hand side of where it says sky one click on the three ellipsis and now I have the option to invert this mask so when I click this we now have everything apart from the sky selected which is exactly what we want so now we have the mountain selected and the rest of the foreground as well we can use the same technique that we used before to remove the foreground the lake and just be left with the mountains so I'm going to come to subtract I'm going to select a linear gradient because that's going to get the job done the quickest and I just click and drag. And so wherever the linear gradient starts from where this red dot is, we get none of the mask in the center point. We get 50% and at the top, it just feathers off and it returns to the full mask above it. So if I want to, I can drag this around and wherever it's red, that denotes this area is masked. And now I can come in and make any changes I want to. So if I wanted to change the temperature, I could crank that up and you can see that that is affecting the mountains rather hideously. So we'll double click to reset it and we'll make some more useful changes. Let's come in and grab the clarity slider and just see what that's doing for us. Look at that, all of that richness suddenly brought back. You know, that's probably a little bit too extreme, but you can see what the clarity slider is doing. I'll double click to reset it and this time we'll try dehaze. And while I do like the dehaze slider, I do find it adds a little bit too much saturation a lot of the time. And so I'm just going to bring in a bit of dehaze and probably more of the clarity. And I really like this effect on the mountains, but it may just be a little bit too heavy for this foreground element here. But that's OK. It gives us another opportunity to experiment with the masks a little bit more. So I want to subtract from the mask again. And this time, let's use a brush. And I'm just going to click and start painting. And wherever I paint, this is going to be removing that effect from the mask. And so I can come over for a couple of passes. And each time I click and paint, it's just removing a little bit more of the mask because we're currently with a flow of 35. And so subsequent strokes over this landmass here is just removing the effect more and more. And if we want to see our before and after of applying this particular mask, we just come over here to the eyeball and we just click this and we see our before. Click it again and we see our after. What a difference. Now, I really love the addition of this clarity and local contrast in this background. However, one of the side effects of that is it's made our mountains just a little bit too dark, in my opinion. So we're losing that effect of atmospheric haze where things are just starting to get a little bit lighter and more washed out the further they get from our camera. And so what we could do is come in, grab the exposure and just increase that ever so slightly. I really want to keep our viewers eye and attention towards the center of the frame here, particularly the chair and the mountains in the background. And so we're going to create what I'm going to call an attention sandwich. Basically, we're going to force our viewers to say, look here, this is the important area. And the way that I'm going to do that is by darkening down the top of the sky and also bringing away attention from this rather busy foreground. So we're going to start at the bottom with a really simple mask. We're going to use a linear gradient. We're going to click at the bottom of the frame and drag up towards the chair. And that's going to allow us to talk into this foreground area. And what I want to do is not only darken things down, 
So I'll grab the whites and drop those down. But I also want to destroy the contrast as well because this is quite a visually busy area. And so by darkening it down, reducing the contrast, we're gonna be able to tease our viewer's eye away from this area and more into the center of the frame. Another thing we could do to help destroy that contrast is grab the clarity slider and take that towards the negative side. Minus 100 is probably a little too strong. I've also probably lifted my blacks a little too far. Let's go somewhere around there. Let's stay organized and give this a name. And let's toggle it off to see where we came from. It's very bright, it's very busy. And let's turn our mask on. And that's just helped to dull down that area. And if you feel like you've gone too far with these sliders, but you don't want to come in and individually move each and every one of these sliders to make corrections, what we can do is actually click the arrow icon here. And just like magic, we have an overall amount slider. And now we can actually move that to increase or decrease the amount as we feel appropriate. And if we jump back into these sliders, all of these adjustments have been moved incrementally based on that adjustment that we just made there. Let me know in the comments because I'm interested to know how many of you knew about that little secret arrow there. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, let's create another mask that's going to finish off this attention sandwich. Again, all we need is a linear gradient, but this time we're going to come from the top bring it down towards the mountains and release and come over. This time we need to click the arrow just to get access to these sliders again. And I'm just gonna bring the exposure of the top of the sky down, perhaps even just reduce the contrast ever so slightly, bring our highlights down, make sure we're happy with the color tone. And if things are getting a little oversaturated, which they are with these adjustments, I can just come in, grab the saturation slider and just ease that back as well. Stay organized, give that one a name as well. This time the clouds look to be getting a bit of a magenta tinge, so I'm just gonna grab the tint and just see if I can't correct that slightly. As well as using Lightroom's masks for creative purposes, we can also use them for corrective purposes as well. And you may have noticed that this mountain, particularly on the left-hand side here, is actually getting quite dark towards the top of the mountain. So this is another opportunity for us to test out another mask. Let's come into the Create New Mask, and this time we're gonna select Color Range. Now we can come over here and we can either click to select a color range, or you can click and drag to select more colors into that range. Here I'm happy just clicking on that one blue, and then we can use the refine slider just to tighten up our mask even more. And now I can come in and boost the exposure, bring the shadows up, and also drop the saturation down as well because we're just getting a little overly blue in that area as well. And now if we toggle our before and after, before, and after you'll see that it's affecting pretty much the whole mountain range and that wasn't really what I was after. I don't want to affect this central part, just this left hand side where things were getting a little bit too dark and also over here as well. And so I'm actually going to remove this center part by using a radial mask this time. So I just need to click on the mask, come to subtract and this time select radial mask. And now if I click and drag in the center, wherever this radial mask is appearing, that change to the mountain range I made based on color range only no longer affects the center portion, only where that mask exists outside of this radial mask. So that's just over here and just over here. And you can see that as I hover over the mask. And you can see that we've also bled over down onto the water as well. And if we want to remove that, the easiest way, just like before, would be to subtract a linear gradient. Now, during our processing, the blues have become quite punchy and vibrant. They're looking really good, but I feel we haven't made the most out of these yellowy browns over on the landmass here and also on the foreground. So how can we address those? Well, we could come down to the color section just here and make adjustments to the oranges and the yellows grab the saturation and crank that up. That's one way that we could address the problem. However, in this video, we're all about the masks. And so I'm gonna come back in, create new mask. And once again, I'm gonna come in and select color range. In the previous mask, you saw how I just clicked on the mountain here. Well, this time what I'm gonna do is actually drag a selection. So I'm looking for an area full of lots of these yellowy oranges that I want to sample. And now Lightroom has made me a selection based on that color range. Again, I feel it's pretty broad, and so I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to grab the refine slider and just bring that down and tighten the mask up. It's a shame that we haven't been able to pick up this highlight on the top of the hill here, but once again, that's a good thing because we get to look at one more masking option after this. But for now, let's make some changes over here and see what we can do to actually enhance that color. One option would be to grab the temperature slider and push that more towards those yellows. If we bring the tint up, that's gonna just push it more towards an orangey hue. 
And if we want, we can just bring that exposure up just a little bit, just to brighten things and give it a little bit more visual interest as well. A third of a stop's fine, and we have a uniform color pop over here. However, I'd like again to bring our viewer's attention more towards the center of the frame, and so I can just subtract it from the very edge by removing a linear mask from this side. And also I'm going to subtract it just from the very bottom here as well, because we worked hard to make sure that this wasn't vying for our viewers attention down in this area. So I now don't want to increase the saturation and end up saying, hey, look down here. OK, let's see if we can't talk into the highlight just on the ridge of the hills over here. OK, the best way to select this little slither of light just on the top here would probably be using the color range tool again. However, I just want to give you more of a comprehensive overview of these masking tools. And so we're going to come in and select the luminance range. And as the name suggests, it allows us to create a selection based on the luminance range, the brightness values that we click on. And so if I click here, Lightroom's made a pretty broad selection based on where we've clicked. And why would that be? Well, this is pretty much a mid-tone. Despite the fact that it looks like a highlight, it's pretty much a mid-tone. And so Lightroom is selecting that tone plus all tones which are quite similar. And that is all defined based on these handles here. This central area here denotes pixels that are 100% selected. And then we have a fall off from here towards the edges. And so if I bring those edges in, we're going to just start to tighten that selection up. And so if I move the shadow slider in here we're going to start losing shadows from that selection which is what we want but we can also grab this central point and just tighten this in as well currently i'm really not wowed by this selection we're going to have to make some more refinements and so you guys know what we need to do now we need to come in and we need to subtract the areas that we don't want so first of all we want to lose the lake and all the foreground here and secondly we want to lose the mountains and so what would be the best way to tackle that that's what you've got to keep asking yourself so i believe that the best way would be to come in and subtract a linear gradient from the bottom and I'll hold the shift key just to keep that perpendicular. And although the mountains share a pretty similar luminance, believe it or not, they do not share the same color. And so what you could also do is come in and subtract the blue from this. And so I'm gonna subtract a color range, come over here and just click and drag over the mountains. And just like that, we now have our perfect selection of the highlights only on this hill. And so now we can come in and do whatever we like. So I'm going to grab the exposure and brighten it up. I'm also going to grab the temperature and push that more into those yellows. Grab the tint just like we did before, just so that we're not going too yellow and we're a nice orangey color. Stay nice and organized and rename it. And let's do a little toggle of our before and our after there you go so we've brightened up that hillside just giving it a little bit more visual interest and now if we want to look at our photo with the complete changes with all of our masks turned off let's do that let's turn this toggle switch off and there you go so this is with a global edit on that original photo but no masking whatsoever and let me turn these back on and there you go, a much more refined edit with a lot of control using Lightroom's really powerful masking tools for most people, that is where they'd leave this edit, but not on this channel, guys. We like to push things just that little bit further, don't we? And so I'm going to give this just a little bit more pizzazz and finish it off very quickly inside of Luminar Neo. So I've gone right click, edit in Luminar Neo, and I'm happy to export that as a TIFF file 16 bit. OK, we don't need to do too much inside of Luminar. Let's just put some Accent AI on, perhaps come into Structure AI, pop a little bit of that in come into the landscape section and I think if we put a little bit of golden air onto this that's going to help enhance those oranges a little more we could even bring our attention more to the seat here and perhaps by just putting a bit of a vignette on this make sure we're feathered off quite nicely maybe even bring that inner light up just so we're brightening the center of the frame I don't want to go too heavy with it so I'll just ease this back a little bit let's jump into the atmosphere AI and let's add a little bit of a haze into this we don't want to go too nuts, but I always like to push things to 100 just so I can see how things are behaving. I often like to add a bit of a mystical glow into my landscape photo, so let's try that. Obviously, that's way too much, but again, we see what it's doing for us. Let's stick that around there. And what if we want to add a little bit of mood with a lookup table? Let's see if we can't find something that complements the blue-orange. Riverside's a pretty good option. 
actually I quite like Bakersfield and you'll see why if I push this all the way to 100 you can see that it's actually injecting a little bit of yellow into those highlights so it's helping to bring more color harmony between the highlights and the shadows so we've got yellow in the highlights bluey purples in the shadows nice but obviously 100's too much and the default value of 30 that seemed pretty nice so they're 29 happy with that and let's have a quick look where we came from, clicking the eye tool here. So this was our Lightroom version, really happy with that. And there you go, there's a quick creative edit inside of Luminar Neo. And I'll just click apply so that sends that back into Lightroom. And just like that, we're back inside Lightroom with our Luminar edit. Okay, let me press N on my keyboard so that we can bring up a direct comparison between where we started and where we got to. So here we have a comparison of our original on the right hand side here. This is our raw untouched photo. And on the left hand side, we have our Lightroom plus Luminar edit. And here is our Lightroom edit where most of the heavy lifting was done with those masking techniques. In this case, I think I prefer this to my Luminar version, but Luminar is a lot of fun and it does have a lot more creative tools than Lightroom does. So if you guys want to get hold of that and complement your editing workflow, I have a discount code through the link in the description below. That's at Sky10. Put it in there, save yourself some money. So while it's capable of doing all the raw editing, just like Lightroom is, so it can be used as a standalone editor. But what I really like about it, which those of you who watch my channel will know, is utilizing those more creative tools that we have access to through Luminar. Please let me know what you thought of Lightroom's masking tools in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.